Royal guest rooms, southern cuisine, and personal riverboat rides? Could this moderate resort be the Disney resort for you? Let's find out today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We're taking an in-depth look into a rather underrated Disney resort, Disney Port Orleans Riverside. This is a laid-back hotel with lots of rustic, Louisiana-inspired charm, and it's also next-door neighbors with Port Orleans French Quarter, meaning you can take a quick stroll or boat ride over to the French Quarter if you're on the hunt for more Mardi Gras vibes, jazz tunes, and a larger array of Southern cuisine. These resorts are like two sides of the same coin. They got the same Southern inspiration, but also two totally unique Louisiana style atmospheres. We've already done a full fledged video on Port Orleans French Quarter if you want to check that out after this, but for now we're staying on the river side of things. As a moderate resort, you can expect Riverside to have mid-range prices, or at least what Disney defines as mid-range pricing, a decent offering of amenities, and decently sized rooms. That's what moderate resorts are, the, the middle of the road. So it's not going to be as cheap as a value resort, but it'll have more to offer. And in the same breath, moderate resorts will be less expensive than deluxe offerings, but won't have as many amenities and perks. Okay, now that you know the basics, let's dive on into the good stuff. Join me for a virtual stroll around the grounds of Port Orleans Riverside. This resort is influenced by rural Louisiana, so expect to see lots of large mansion-style guest buildings, which the resort refers to as Magnolia Bend, along with rustic-style lodges, aka Alligator Bayou. Both of these styles embody the two different types of Louisiana influences you're going to experience down south. One of the highlights of Riverside is the eye-catching water wheel sitting on the docks of the bayou right across from Old Man Island. More on that location here in just a second. And Riverside isn't named after a river for nothing. This resort has its own Sasagula River, which adds to the peaceful and all-around remote ambiance. While the theming may be a little bit more understated than French Quarter with their jazz bands and sea monsters, I'd say that Riverside's southern style can be more appealing to others depending on what kind of vibes you're aiming for. The southern hospitality levels here are definitely apparent, but not in a stuffy way. When you're near the Magnolia Bend guest buildings, you'll be immersed in a more sophisticated realm with neatly managed manicured landscaping, sweeping staircases, massive white columns, cozy gazebos, and decorative fountains. And when you're around Alligator Bayou, the atmosphere shifts into a place with more natural greenery and hammocks free for you to lounge in and winding nature trails. Overall, the combination of water plus unique landscaping plus an all-around sense of serenity makes for a nice family-friendly atmosphere and a much-needed break away from the hectic feel of theme parks. So now it's time to talk about price, because we need to rip this band-aid off earlier rather than later. What does a moderately priced room actually look like for Riverside? To figure out an average price point, we gotta look into the different room styles available here. I'll take a closer look at each room's specific theming in the next section of this video, so hang tight. First up, we've got our cheapest option, the standard room. Some standard rooms will give you a nice window view of the woods, the pool, or the river, or the parking lot. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, my friends. Each of these rooms has two queen-size beds and sleeps up to four people. The price of these rooms per night can fluctuate between $300 and $430, depending on which view you choose, as well as what time of year or what day of the week you'll be staying there. When you check in during a weekday, hotel rates tend to be a little cheaper than if you were to check in on a weekend. And the back-to-school season around August and September tends to have some of the cheapest hotel rates in the year. The standard view, aka that parking lot view, is the least expensive option you've got, but the river view tends to be the priciest of the standard options. But if you're the type to always keep your curtains closed, or you're not planning on hanging out in your room for long stretches of time, it might be worth it for you to save a couple bucks by choosing that standard view instead. And remember, you're in a moderate resort, which means you've got a walkway right outside your room. So your window is always going to have that railing in front of it anyway, and the walkway and people going back and forth. Because Disney's value in moderate resorts are more like motels, where you park right outside your room and the room opens up to the outdoors. The only moderate where you're not going to have that happen is the tower at Grand Destino Tower in Coronado Springs. Now, if you want to be near Riverside's lobby, which is going to put you closer to the restaurants, the transportation options, and Bell services, then you may choose a preferred room. The Magnolia Bend doesn't have any preferred rooms available, but Alligator Bayou does. And these preferred rooms are pretty much the same as what you'll get with the standards, with their two queen beds and four person capacity, but you'll be closer to the action without having to walk long distances from your room to other essential places around the resort. 
Preferred rooms are just a tad bit pricier than the standard ones, but not by much. Usually you can expect to pay between $360 and $430 per night. If you're traveling with fewer people and you prefer to have just one big bed in the room, you can always choose one of the king bed options. There's the regular king bed room available, or there's the king bed room that's accompanied by a child size pull down bed. But these rooms can sleep up to three people, two adults and one kid. The room usually costs between $375 and $425 per night. On the other hand, if you're a family of five, Port Orleans Riverside is one of the few moderate resorts that does have a fifth sleeper room option. These rooms have two queen beds plus a child size pull down bed. Now, what I mean by child size is that these pull down beds are just a bit bigger than five feet, so an adult probably won't be able to sleep on one of these comfortably, unless you're used to sleeping in a fetal position all night long. These fifth sleeper rooms are located in Alligator Bayou only and typically range in price between $320 and $400 per night. But the most popular rooms at Riverside are located in Magnolia Bend, the grand and spectacular Royal Guest Rooms. I know you're itching to hear more about these. First, I got to get that price tag talk out of the way so you know what we're dealing with here. If you want a royal room, but maybe don't need a royal view, you can always opt for a room with a standard view for a cheaper price. But if you'd like a more picturesque view to match your royal room vibes, then you can choose a river or woods view instead. These rooms have two queen beds and sleep up to four people. Sorry, no extra fifth sleeper with the royal rooms. The royal rooms are a little bit more expensive compared to the others, which you'll soon find out why, with prices between $380 and $460 per night. All in all, the Riverside's rooms tend to be double what you'll pay over at any of the value resorts, depending on the style you choose. They still tend to be some of the lowest priced moderate style rooms that you'll find on property. Okay, I teased this long enough. Let's talk style. The basic setup of the rooms at Port Orleans Riverside is going to include your beds, of course, along with a small table and chairs, a mini fridge, a coffee maker, a split bathroom with two sinks, and a little closet area. These rooms aren't quite as small as those standard value resort rooms, but they're certainly not as spacious as most of the deluxe resort rooms either. That's why Riverside is labeled as a moderate resort where everything is right in the middle. With that being said, don't expect like tons of room in these rooms, especially if you opt for the pull down bed and choose to keep it open during the length of your stay. Like I mentioned earlier, Riverside is split up into two sections, Alligator Bayou and Magnolia Bend. So the designs of these rooms are different depending on which section you're in. The Alligator Bayou rooms mimic those rustic, swampy vibes. You'll have mirrors framed with tree branches, a wooden crate nightstand, and a sink fixture made out of a washboard. Think Frontierland for this, but because this is Louisiana, of course you're going to see Princess Tiana and friends showing up in the decor. In fact, if you get a room with a pull-down bed, you'll find a mural of Louis, the musical alligator, snoozing alongside Ray, and the froggy versions of Tiana and Prince Naveen. It's important to note that the lodges over in Alligator Bayou are two stories high and they don't have elevators for you to rely on. Though one flight of stairs may not be a huge deal for some, it can be a big deal if you're carrying strollers or sleeping kids, or if someone in your group has mobility concerns. If you want a request being placed on the first floor of your resort, you can make your request during the online check-in process via your My Disney Experience account. Or if you want to speak to a cast member directly about your concern, you can always call the resort reservation number at 407-939-1936. Room requests aren't always guaranteed, but cast members do their best to accommodate and will definitely make sure your requests are met if you're physically not capable of staying in a room on the second floor. Alrighty, now on to the rooms over at Magnolia Bend. The standard rooms in this section also mirror the surrounding areas, so expect to see lots of class, southern charm, and simplicity. The color scheme inside the room is simple and sleek. The furniture feels a little more upscale as compared to Alligator Bayou with a marble top table and nicely carved headboards. But don't worry, you're not totally missing out on the Disney influence in these rooms either. The curtain that divides the bedroom from the bathroom features none other than Tiana herself. But if a single themed curtain just ain't cutting it for you, then it's about time I tell you all about Riverside's claim to fame, those royal guest rooms. Aside from a stay at Disney's Art of Animation Resort, your hotel room really doesn't get any more Disney-fied than this. I mean it, the Disney Imagineers went all out on these. The room itself feels very regal with ornate decorations directly inspired by several classic Disney princess films. On the wall, you'll find portraits of princesses like Ariel, Snow White, Aurora, Rapunzel, and several other fan favorite heroines. But because this is Tiana's resort, she gets the biggest picture right next to the TV. And you can also find silhouette portraits of each princess's beloved 
beloved prince on both sides of the gold-rimmed mirror. And be on the lookout for hidden sidekicks. Your sinks will be shaped like Aladdin's magic lamp, and you'll find Sultan, aka the footstool doggy from Beauty and the Beast, sitting near the TV too. But my absolute favorite part about these rooms have got to be those headboards. I'm dead serious. The headboards not only have a gorgeous bayou mural, but they also have cascading fireworks that light up the mural sky. Has Disney successfully found a way to give me goosebumps while talking about headboards? Why, yes, yes, they have. Now, those of you on the West Coast know that they also have fireworks in Disneyland hotels headboards. So you can now stay in a firework bedecked hotel room on both coasts. I have a hard time finding anything negative to say about these royal guest rooms, except maybe they're a little bit too fancy schmancy for some. I kind of actually do like the Frontierland theming of the Alligator Bayou rooms, but these are a ton of fun and maybe worth the extra splurge, especially if you've got some Disney princess fans in your group who you want to see the first time they open the door to this place. The only downside to the Royal Rooms is that they'll definitely be the priciest option out of Riverside's room styles. So if you've got a set budget and these Royal Rooms cross that line you weren't wanting to cross, the standard rooms will still provide you with a very stylish stay. All right, let's talk location. Location, 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 right? This is one of those seriously important pillars that sometimes gets overlooked when it comes to choosing the perfect hotel for you, especially when you think about the fact that Disney World is 40 square miles large. It's the size of two Manhattan Islands. So where you choose your hotel is really, really important. And if you plan on doing tons of shopping during this next vacation of yours, then by golly, Riverside is gonna be prime real estate for you. Port Orleans Resort Riverside is a Disney Springs area resort, meaning you'll be super close to none other than, drum roll please, Disney Springs. We're gonna talk more about the best ways to travel over to this shopping district from Riverside Resort next in our transportation section. I know you're super excited, me too. But first we need to talk about the downside of Riverside's location. Because it's so close to the Disney Springs area, that means Riverside's placed further away from the parks. I'm not talking like hours away or anything, you're still in the Disney bubble, but you're definitely not within walking distance to any of the parks either, unlike some of the other hotels. Even a couple of Disney's value resorts like Pop Century and Art of Animation are closer to parks like Epcot and Hollywood Studios and they come at a much cheaper price point than Riverside's rooms. And they've got that Skyliner. But when you're at Riverside, you're definitely getting that secluded feeling, which could be a good or a bad thing. It's good if you want to make sure you're staying somewhere that'll help you wind down and completely separate yourself from the theme park atmosphere by the end of each night. But if your group is planning to really maximize your time in the parks every single day by arriving super early for rope drop and sticking around until closing time, then having a long trip to and from your hotel room all the time could get tedious. So now that you got a fairly good idea of where Port Orleans Riverside is located, here's how you're gonna get around from place to place. You have two transportation options at this hotel, bus and boat. Now the river boats are only gonna be able to deliver you to the French Quarter or the Disney Springs Shopping District. And they're so not in a hurry to get you anywhere fast. These are slow river boat rides. They take about 10 minutes to get you to French Quarter and 20 minutes to get you to Disney Springs one way. But that's what makes these boat rides relaxing and enjoyable, right? It's less about speed and more about taking in the river views and the lush landscapes and the jazzy tunes piped in through the boat speakers. But the Disney bus system is what you're going to rely on to get you anywhere else. This is the case for most moderate resorts except for Disney's Caribbean Beach, which is the exception to the rule and has convenient access to the Skyliner for Hollywood Studios and Epcot. Because of how spread out this resort is, there are four separate bus stops around Riverside. Once again, this can be a good and a bad thing. Multiple bus stops are good because that prevents you from having to walk all the way to the front of the hotel to catch the bus. You're at least guaranteed to be semi near to a bus stop no matter which part of the resort you're staying in. However, this internal bus loop also adds quite a bit of time onto the bus trip itself. Considering all the stops your bus is going to have to make to pick up more and more guests, all of that time is added onto your trip from your hotel to the parks. The internal bus loop also means these buses can get pretty crowded after the fourth and final stop, so just be prepared for some rather tight quarters during your daily travels. If you'd rather skip the bus headache altogether, you can always choose to book a ride share instead, like an Uber, a Lyft, or a minivan, but these will come at an extra price per ride versus the totally free bus transportation services that Disney provides. But then again, that extra cost for quicker travel and a more private trip could be well worth saving for because time is money. So how does Riverside food 
would stack up against other Disney World Resort restaurants. Well, it's time to chow down. Riverside Mill Food Court is Riverside's quick service restaurant, serving up breakfast, lunch, and dinner open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Even for a quick service spot, you'll still find plenty of Southern hospitality here. The breakfast menu has your standard brekkie eats, but the lunch and dinner menu reps some of that Southern cuisine that Louisiana is known for. You're going to find options here like jambalaya, the pimento BLT, prime rib dip sandwich, and gumbo. But if you're from Louisiana, don't eat here with expectations set super high, because this ain't going to be like your famous authentic Cajun-inspired restaurant you're going to find back home. If you're not big into the Cajun-inspired eats, there are also some standard theme park choices like salads and pizza, pasta, and burgers. There's also some grab-and-go sections here if you're in need of a quick snack to bring back to your room or to eat in the parks. Now, Boatwright's Dining Hall is the only table service restaurant between both Riverside and French Quarter, and it's only open at dinner time. Once again, you're looking at a menu with lots of Cajun and Southern style eats. Some standout options are the Mardi Gras fritters made with pimento cheese and served with a side of pepper jelly, the Nashville hot chicken, the deep south shrimp and grits, and General Fulton's prime rib. Having a hard time choosing? The all-you-can-eat chef's platter, called Taste of the Bayou, includes the works. We're talking ribs, hot chicken, smoked sausage, beef brisket, mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, roasted corn, and green beans, all for 36 bucks. And if you saved room for dessert, you can choose from a trio of classic Southern sweets, each with their own unique spin. They've got pecan pie cheesecake, Mississippi mud pie, creme brulee, and bananas foster bread pudding. In the past, we've really enjoyed our meals here. Not our favorite place to eat on property by any means, but nonetheless enjoyable if you're already staying there. That being said, since the dining room isn't too terribly big at Bolt Wrights, it can feel kind of cramped in here during those peak dining times. Just something to keep in mind. Now, Riverside has a pool, so of course they have a pool bar. Muddy Rivers is the pool bar over on Old Man Island. It definitely fits the laid back vibe and makes for a nice location to grab a drink or a bite to eat. Some of the fun specialty cocktails you'll find here include drinks like the fruity rum-based front porch freeze, the non-alcoholic bullfrog brew made with lemonade, green apple, and kiwi, and the fruity vodka-based gotta melon juice. And last but not least, the River Roost Lounge may not seem like much, but it's a seriously essential part to the all-around Riverside ambiance. Yes, it has drinks. Yes, it has snacks. Yes, it's open late. But on top of that, it's seriously entertaining thanks to the musical stylings of Yeehaw Bob Jackson. Yeehaw Bob is a bit of a Disney legend who's been performing at Port Orleans for over 20 years. He's not there every night, but you can check his schedule. When you compare the dining at Riverside against the dining at Disney's other moderate resorts, you come out in the middle again. Riverside tends to have better quality food than Disney's Caribbean Beach, and it definitely has more dining options than French Quarter, not to mention you can still easily travel over to French Quarter if you're wanting one of their famous beignets to snack on. But if you're comparing Riverside's dining options up against Coronado Springs and Coronado's Grandestino Tower, Riverside is the inferior choice of those two. Coronado just has tons more to choose from with consistently better quality food, especially at the tower. However, don't forget that you can always take that riverboat on over to Disney Springs for hundreds of other stellar dining options to choose from. I personally think that Disney Springs has better restaurants than the parks, so when it comes to food, you definitely have good options. Real talk, if you decide to spend an entire day at Riverside, are you going to get bored? Well, it depends on who's asking, but the quick answer is probably not. There is a lot you can definitely fill your day and night with here, so let's take a close look at all those recreational options. Old Man Island is the resort's feature pool, modeled after an abandoned sawmill. It's got all the standard feature pool essentials like water slides, kiddie pool, and a whirlpool tub, so there's a little something for everyone. But if you're looking for a more peaceful day by the poolside, there's also five leisure pools spread out around the entire resort that are probably going to be a little bit quieter than Old Man Island and have a chiller vibe. Now, Movies Under the Stars and Campfires on the Bayou are offered in the evenings so you can relax, watch a Disney film, and roast some marshmallows for no extra charge. And all this river isn't just for show, you know. You can actually go bass fishing here at the Riverside Levee Marina, or you can try out classic cane pole fishing at Old Man Island, but these activities will cost you a little extra to experience. And it is always catch and release. And speaking of extra costs, one really unique activity offered over at Riverside is the horse-drawn carriage excursion along the river. This ride is just under 30 minutes and the carriage can fit up to four adults or two adults and three small kids. 
really small kids. Carriage rides cost $55 and reservations are highly recommended. If you're looking to get your heart pumping and walking a billion steps around the parks ain't cutting it for you, Riverside also offers bike rentals, including four-person Surrey bikes and a jogging trail around the perimeter of the resort. Kids can burn a little more energy by hanging out on the playground or in the Medicine Show Arcade. These arcades can be fun alternatives during those rainy or gloomy Orlando days. And if you have shopping to do and you haven't already gotten your fill of gift shops over at Disney Springs, you can swing by Fulton's General Store for lots of souvenirs and general sundries that you might have forgotten to throw in your suitcase before you took off for a vacation. But my personal favorite Riverside activity has to be trekking over to French Quarter for their bountiful selection of beignets. So we've finally gotten to the part of the video where it's time to talk about perks, right? One of the best parts about staying at a Disney-owned resort are the theme park benefits. And I'm not strictly talking about free modes of transportation. When you stay at any Disney-owned resort, you'll receive the early theme park benefit, which allows you to enter any park on any day, 30 minutes before the parks open for everyone else. This upper hand gives you the chance to get in line for those popular rides before the rest of the Disney crowds are allowed to enter through the floodgates. And that means you can cut down on those major wait times at the start of your day. However, when you stay at a moderate resort like Riverside, then you will not have access to the other major resort-based perk called extended evening hours. These allow you to stay in select parks on certain evenings for up to two hours after the parks close for everyone else. This benefit is limited to deluxe resort guests only. So if the extended evening hours perk was something you had your heart set on, you may want to check out a deluxe resort like Disney's Wilderness Lodge or Yacht and Beach Club instead. Or as an alternative solution that'll allow you to explore the parks later and stay at Riverside during your vacation, you can check and see when the after hours events are available during your trip. These are separately ticketed events for Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and Magic Kingdom, and allow you to hang out in the parks on certain evenings for three hours after they close to the public. You can learn more about these events and what's included in that separate ticket price on our website. I'll link our after hours post down in the description for you. All right, so is it worth it? Should you stay here? Committing to a resort is always tricky, but if you know what your heart wants, or more importantly, what your budget allows, then it could be an easier decision than you may realize. So is Port Orleans Riverside gonna be the hotel you're gonna commit to this year? Explore those Sasagula rivers if you want a truly character-driven hotel stay. These royal guest rooms can be hard to pass up, but even if you choose one of the other standard rooms at this resort, you're still gonna get to stay in a room with lots of detail and Disney essence. And maybe you're looking for a nice, relaxing atmosphere. Other hotels like Pop Century or Boardwalk Inn can feel like they're always in the middle of the action. For some, that hustle, bustle, and excitement is great, but for others who are looking for a more secluded stay with relaxed and easygoing vibes away from the theme park scene, Riverside could be a better fit. And maybe you want a place with tons to see and do. From pool days to fishing to bike rides to nighttime piano entertainment, you're not going to find a shortage of things at Riverside. If you feel like the resort itself is definitely part of the whole vacation package, but you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars more on a deluxe room, Riverside can be that nice middle ground for you. Plus, beignets are just a walk away, just saying. Now, this hotel might not be for you if you'd rather stay somewhere more affordable. The cheapest hotel room options at Riverside still tend to push well over $300 per night. And you don't have to settle for that hefty investment if you don't want to. Even those nearby Good Neighbor hotels, which partner with Disney to give their guests similar Disney resort benefits, can be hundreds of dollars less per night. So make sure you thoroughly explore your options to see which hotel is going to give you the best offerings at the best price point. Or maybe you want a hotel with faster transportation options. Resorts along the monorail loop or the Disney Skyliner route can get you over to the parks way faster than the Riverside buses can, especially when you factor in Riverside's internal bus loop, which can majorly slow down your overall travel time. If you're not looking to constantly pay for ride shares to get you to the parks quickly, one of the other hotels with more convenient modes of transportation might be the route you need to turn instead. Or maybe you want a hotel with more dining options. Sure, Riverside has some pretty tasty Cajun offerings at your disposal, as well as a whole Disney Springs area with hundreds of eats that's only a boat ride away. But if you're looking for a hotel with lots more dining options right there in the hotel, or even signature fancy dining options, this one isn't going to satisfy those fancy food cravings of yours, so you're better off looking into one of the deluxe resorts or switching gears and booking a room over at Disney's Coronado Springs instead. 
All right, so tell me your thoughts. Are you a Port Orleans Riverside stan or is there a better hotel out there that folks should be looking into for their next Disney vacation? Let me know in the comments what you think and keep checking back here for even more full Disney resort reviews coming soon. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.